Sanam. Welcome. How are you? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I am good. Thank you. Okay. So, Sanam, you have uh, you started your next journey in Denmark, Aarhus exactly, University, sir. and exactly, uh, you are in PhD program. And uh, Sanam, I expect you to help uh, Indian students uh, in definitely uh, in the form of you know invite uh, telling them about various uh, informations about uh, higher educational opportunities there. Yes, so uh, i would like to have interaction with you regular basis uh, weekly basis and all so yes, uh, in that interaction i want uh, sanam we tell students so what are the various opportunities in europe uh, as a whole and uh, to in uh, specific universities and uh, i think it makes sense for us to start with your university Definitely. first i would like you to tell uh, very briefly about your university Okay, sir. Uh, so, like, I am currently in um, Aarhus University. Aarhus is uh, like second largest city of Denmark, actually. I mean, mm-hmm. largest as well as second most populous, uh, populous city of uh, Denmark. So, mm-hmm. um, in Aarhus, the like, it's a student city. So, basically, uh, student city. When we call any European city as a student city, it means that mm-hmm. uh, the university is going to be very large, and mm-hmm. that is how the university name is also. Uh, named after the city so aarhus mm-hmm. university is the biggest uh, in denmark almost mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's uh, it has a qs ranking of uh, 109 so it mm-hmm. it's actually a worth and in europe it ranks uh, in 43 so mm-hmm. i think uh, it's nice and uh, almost uh, this you uni- know this university has uh, like very large campus um, mm-hmm. bigger than many indian institutes of technology mm-hmm. as well Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, along with that uh, right now i am doing a phd in computer like phd is in um, like the skills that i am going to use is uh, computer science skills which is machine learning and deep learning generative ai but i am hired in a department called uh, dentistry so i am working for a dental uh, a dental you can say a dental school but uh, i'll be using their uh, i'll be using their information whatever they are collecting from the um, users and mm-hmm. i'll be improving their uh, improving their uh, logic system basically so mm-hmm. i'm like as you know already i have done btech in computer science and masters mm-hmm. in also in computer science right so mm-hmm. but i think that uh, doing a phd in interdisciplinary field uh, makes you like sustain longer so yes. this is uh, this is what oh, i'm so, like currently doing sir yeah yeah same you said generative ai right yes sir yes sir this is a very buzzword nowadays and lot of people <laughs> yeah. are uh, you know the latest domain i think to work in so yes, sir, can yes, very briefly can you tell uh, those students uh, there are so many btech who are in computer science they are doing graduation and they want some time directly to jump into uh, phd courses can you tell the students what is this generative ai and yes, uh, what is this research domain okay so generative ai is actually um, you can say divided in two parts one is for text based and one is image based so mm-hmm. text based as you can uh, as you already know we use chat gpt in daily life right so chat gpt is a uh, like live example of text based uh, generative ai and uh, if we say that let's say uh, like i tell you one immediate example let's say i take your image and i i command my machine learning model that okay um, change the background okay uh, let's say i want you to beautify with a cap mm-hmm. right so we all these things we can do with this generative ai it's a very basic example but mm-hmm. uh, yeah there are a lot of applications in medical imaging or you can say there are a lot of applications in uh, space industry so every every industry wants this wants to use generative ai because uh, you first uh, make your machine learning model learn about uh, your data set and then you want to pick some random uh, random distribution from the data set so this is like a, a more detailed uh, information about generative ai but mm. uh, it's basically you have some input which is let's say image or text and you want to generate a uh, output which is very similar to your input data set mm-hmm. so this is how it works okay. Yeah. So in your university, I presume that uh, there will be so many opportunities, uh, you know, for yes, uh, uh, students for uh, those who are interested for pursuing a master's and doctorate. So uh, and uh, today also we are going to discuss about some opportunities. Uh, so Sanam, uh, uh, is your university also providing opportunities to those who are graduates and they want to go for doc- PhD, which what we call direct PhD, or only after masters? 
Yeah, so direct B Tech students cannot apply at my university for PhD. But okay. there is one thing. I recently met one girl who has uh, uh, who has completed her uh, B Tech from mm. India, and mm. uh, she got enrolled in a master program. But it's an integrated okay. one, and okay. uh, this where happens only in Denmark, where you can do integrated PhD after okay. uh, B Tech. So mm. this happens only in Denmark, all over Europe. i used mm. to mention that okay there is no integrated phd in europe mm. while uh, guiding my students previously but uh, i have like recently discovered that mm. um, so mm. even msc um, let's say like you are a, a bsc msc student and uh, they can also like uh, easily go get into this after msc uh, mm. yeah after msc also they can easily mm. get into but so that usually includes mc also right masters of computer application uh mca students will be asked to do some uh, course course work okay. like they have okay. to do course work. but it's very flexible i mean uh, you can mm. always approach to professor if you if mm. you are like not sure but uh, mm. the only thing is you apply whatever you mm. have you just apply because in uh, mm. here especially in nordic countries mm. they want okay. you to directly submit your application rather mm. than approaching professor and all rest of the thing so if you mm. apply and you get shortlisted and professor says that your profile is very relevant for us but uh, you have to do some course work to meet uh, to meet the uh, protocol all to meet the requirements mm. right so mm. then they will ask you to do some course work and then they will directly hire you as a phd and then mm. the good thing is when, while you are doing course work because in india you do course work you during your mtech and phd both right so mm -hmm. the good thing is your tuition fees will be waived off and mm. you will be paid a, a scholarship as well for your living mm. expenses and your uh, rental rental expenses so mm. it's very nice i mean you can get out with uh, four year within four year from your phd mm. if you like mm. uh, if you get into this integrated program okay and and if you get into phd program after masters uh, what is the scale of scholarship a student can think of getting uh so it's like denmark has highest uh, uh, denmark and norway has highest uh, uh, pay, paid salary for uh, for, for phd students right so mm -hmm. it's almost uh, you earn like uh, um, 3 to 3.5 per month and uh, okay. yeah and uh, but yeah like lot of tax you will be giving of mm -hmm. course uh, so in and all uh, you will be able to very easily sustain uh along mm. with that you will be easily able to uh, like if you are alone you you will be able to save as well okay but and, uh, and the rent rent is very high actually mm. rent is very mm. high here mm. so you stay within the campus or uh, you need to stay outside the campus campus either of it like uh, most of the students here uh, prefer to stay outside not in campus mm. because uh, mm. um, anyway you are going to um, like you have to exit from campus mm -hmm. after one year because they won't allow you to uh, stay more than one year if you are okay. a phd mm -hmm. student then uh, phd postdoc or professor whatever it is uh, you are not allowed to uh, stay for more than one year so that's okay. why uh, students usually phd or uh, postdocs usually um, start to explore outside the university because mm -hmm. they anyway have to shift after right afterwards okay so. mm -hmm. okay so before we go to uh, the opportunities uh, sam uh my last question to you is uh, why a student should join your university what are the advantages okay. yeah so advantage is that uh, you are you, uh, you are always on your own no one is going to push you no one is asking you no one will ask you for a meeting if you mm. have an idea and you know what to implement you will be mm. you can basically implement your idea for let's say 6 months a uh, whole 6 mm. months and you don't need to mm. uh, say a thing to your professor and you mm. have lot of freedom here and mm. this freedom mm. is something that uh, brilliant minds would ask for because mm. uh, uh, brilliant if a, if you always pinpoint your uh, brilliant mind like do this do that and you always waste time in weekly meetings and mm. resulting nothing i think that's mm. uh, that's a uh, uh, that's not good i mean so mm. freedom is something that you will enjoy okay. if you join mm. this university yeah wonderful so can uh, now sam we can share some of the opportunities with the students this week yes 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 sir sure uh let me share my screen sir uh, i hope it is visible yeah it is visible now yeah yeah so this is like uh, the home page where they they release all these vacant positions and mm. they have provided like uh, so different schools or different uh, different mm. head um, with mm. positions so faculty mm. of arts has different uh, different tracks for phd mm. and faculty of business or business uh, business studies uh, graduate school has their own um, own um, tracks mm. and uh, 
this is where i work so this this graduate school of health is where i am right now and mm. they have multiple tracks so you mm. can let's say um, let's say i mean we can click one of it and show show to the mm. students so let's say mm. i open this graduate school of health right now and mm. once you click this you will have three uh, three different calls okay one is ordinary open call which is like mm. uh, uh, you you have to submit your own research proposal and everything so i would mm. not for uh, like students to go for this because uh, this is like very strictly for corporates i mean because mm. corporates also hire phd students here uh, mm. like they, they actually um, like give um, you know the startups actually collaborate with universities here to mm. to uh, to to provide a phd uh, degree to the students so this is mm. for mostly for those those people okay. then predefined phd projects is something that you should look for and mm-hmm. predefined phd projects has uh, like always uh, uh, some uh, you know like uh, predefined project the description will always be there then mm. uh, this is which is will always be fully funded so if you mm. like if you see here call for applications for a fully financed phd fellowship and this mm. is what always you should apply for never apply mm. for any open call or any general call because you have to fund yourself otherwise so mm. this is what uh, you should look into and mm. uh, they 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 easily mention like a msc degree in relevant field is required and the mm. deadline is 16 october so okay. most of the time it's like uh, they they have different tracks like uh, mm. the they they have different uh, phases actually i mean so mm. by mm. the time everyone applies by 16 october they will take one month for evaluation. evaluation after mm-hmm. one month we we'll start rolling out the emails and um, ask for interview calls and everything and then they will mm-hmm. tell you that whether you are selected or not so this is mm-hmm. how it works and mm-hmm. uh, if i if i say like uh, submit the application via this link this link will mm-hmm. always be there in every advertisement so if you mm-hmm. click this link you will see that uh, it will redirect you to a very basic form i hope this mm-hmm. form is visible as well yeah yeah mm. so this is mm. like very easy form to fill i mean you need to upload your cv your diploma mm. etc mm. and uh, mm. rest of the proofs and documents so mm. this is what i would say ki um, like denmark has the easiest application uh, portal for phd mm. so mm. anyone okay. can easily go into and apply yeah mm. thank you sir and what are the, what are the typical uh, you know scores or exam uh, requirements uh, same for apply application uh yes sir so the typical exams that you may have to give is ielts and uh, most of the time ielts is also like waived off by the university but uh, mm. we usually ask students to give ielts so that they don't get into you know a hustle by the embassy or uh, by the time of visa processing mm. Mm-hmm. So university may waive off, but you have to mm-hmm. give it uh, for your embassy or uh, for the visa processing. Mm-hmm. So IELTS is one document, and uh, if you have uh, like six point five plus from your bachelor's or seven okay. plus, I would I would say because the competition is very high, seven mm-hmm. plus in bachelor CGP. I'm talking about the Indian CGP. So okay. if you have seven plus in your uh, B Tech, let's say, mm-hmm. and uh, you have eight um, plus or seven point five plus in your M Tech, then you mm-hmm. are like a typical candidate to apply for such positions. Okay. And I mm-hmm. think uh, those are the students who should uh, prefer for PhD as well, right? So, so, so you are talking about uh, only students from Premium Institute or Tier Two, Tier Three colleges in no, India? No, no, no. That doesn't matter, sir. I am a mm-hmm. Tier Three college student already, mm-hmm. so <laughs> that doesn't matter. I mean. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So, so uh, Sam, we'll keep it very restricted videos uh, every week. I don't yes. want to make it very, very long. So, I think the kind of information which you have shared with the students, I'm very sure they will listen to it. And yes. uh, next sequel of the keep on making. In one of the yes. videos, we are also going to discuss about the very, very precise and concise, uh, you know, application which you have shown. And yes. Denmark also, uh, as you said, the universities there do not uh, ask you to fill a lot of uh, you know things. Exactly. There. So we'll exactly. discuss in one of our videos about that also. Yes, sir. So so we ended up here only today, Sam. Thanks a lot for your time, and I'll catch you Thank next you, week again. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye bye.